come to a point where uh, after the communication skills from the point of view of language, grammar, uh, what we have covered so far, we'll venture to something exciting, visual communication. Uh, let us just start off with the outline. So uh, the purpose of uh, today's talk would be uh, basically on various usage of what visuals should be used and how can you, uh, what happened? I'm sorry, actually, I, uh, some problem in reading this. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get enough time to spend on this. What, you can read it what, <laughs> what's, uh, what's basically wrong with this? Uh, some points, fonts are uh, too bad. Anything else? Fonts are? Not very clear. Not very clear. Okay, anything else? What is the scariest part of, part of this uh, slide right now? Huh? Color, okay. Huh? Sentences are too big. Un okay. You can't even see what is the third sentence, okay. But I am not able to get uh, one very important feedback out there. What is the most scariest part of this slide right now? Colors, uh, yeah, we covered colors already. Doesn't it font, yeah, okay, font size. Doesn't it uh, font size? The script type is not suitable for this, right? Doesn't it scare you that this is the second slide of 137 slides, more to come? In a similar way, <laughs> I got scared. Okay, just kidding. Actually, uh, starting a fresh way, uh, we are here to uh, talk about uh, visual communication skill. And what you saw is actually a parody of what could be uh, a well communicated slide. So uh, we will talk about uh, visual communication, and that's why I've kept visual in a separate color and font. Thanks to uh, Kentaro Toyama, who is. Uh, <coughs> from uh, Microsoft Research, and I happened to attend his presentation during a summer school which I attended in Bangalore. And this presentation is based on his talk <laughs> there, plus some additional references from other places. Uh, okay, so any talk, for that matter, whatever you give, um, has a goal. You, you start off with it, whether it be, be a seminar, it can be your APS, or it can be your MTech presentation or even a conference paper. So you, what you want is that the audience should not only understand what you are telling, but they should also remember and uh, take away something, um, what message you are trying to convey. So that message is uh, so very important to be conveyed in a format that they remember and take it back. So whenever I, I uh, just now an example of uh, Kentaro Toyama, the presentation was so good that I, I carried it with me all the time. And that's how I use it whenever I get a chance. So whenever we talk about presentation, the first thing people relate to is that it has to be impressive. Now, uh, in the process, what I'm going to explain to you, impress comes actually at the last point of the process. Because impression will come only when you have uh, a good execution at the back. And how will you execute well? Only if you plan well. So uh, analogy I'm drawing, I being a filmmaker myself, uh, I, uh, you have to excuse me because I'll draw analogies mostly from the background of this. On the left, you see a sketch and a, in a, and a drawing by Satyajit Ray for the characters of the film uh, and the kind of detailing he has put in terms of how the look and feel of the character would be is not only from the drawing, but he has also made notes about what is it. When it came to execution stage, what the shooting of the film, he went ahead and just did the fine touches of checking the makeup right and all that. And that's how you get classics like Ghare Bai Re, and that's how we have a director like Satyajit Ray who is acclaimed worldwide for his direction. The point I'm saying is that for every presentation, if there is a proper plan and a well-executed plan will result in an impressive presentation. So um, another analogy, 
Um, think of any film you have you have seen. Um, I'm not talking about films like um, maybe uh, the violent ones, but a typical entertaining family film will mostly have this as outline. Anybody uh, disagrees with this outline? You take any any rom coms, whatever you you feel like, and you you enjoyed that. But if you if you go to the if you go to the core of that thought, what actually they wanted to do was this. They wanted to set up a particular story in, in whatever it happens in Punjab or it happens in, in Delhi or whatever. But they start with a conflict. They, they have a false climax where typically there is an interval. And then you have another rising action, another false climax because then they have to show the last frame of they lived happily together. So they just come to that point and then they say that, it happened. If I just map that with your uh, headings of the presentation, typically it will fall into place. So it will start with the introduction. It will have a problem or observation. You just you just start the motivation behind why are you giving this presentation. You establish what is the problem. You will cite some related work, like you are going to do the literature review now. And uh, I think first is the deadline, right? Um, you will you will propose a solution. You will uh, you'll say that this this is how it should work if this is the problem, and uh, you will also show how that solution has worked, showing your results or the proof or whatever you have done in your research, what you are presenting us, and um, whatever is left over, you will say this is future work, and and we will take it up in the next presentation or in the next paper or whatever. So in short, what happens is uh, typical outline will will resemble a good story, actually. And that's how you will be able to captivate people by what you wanted to say. Now, if you have if you have that as your target, that you have to come to a point where you need to get a story, and why is story important? Story is important because everybody loves story. Whatever age group, whatever format, whatever the audience, everybody will love that story. And if you have to have that particular thing, then this is the process we are going to follow. And for the next two lectures, so including this, it will be three lectures, we are going to devote for each of this step in the process, how we will go from planning stage to execution stage, and finally, on the impress stage, that how, how you can actually modify the thing. So when you talk about presentation, unfortunately, I start with something called planning, which looks very boring. But uh, let me assure you, with Without proper planning, you can't execute your presentation. And without proper execution, you can't impress people. So whatever topics you are expecting in visual communication presentation skills will actually come in the last topic of impress. Um, OK, so we'll start with something called plan. We'll go ahead with something called execute. While executing, it is, it is just converting your plan in the form of a presentation. And right now, let me remind you, this is not about font. This is not about colors. This is not about effects. This is not about transitions, all that. This is just about putting your presentation in a proper order, in a structure. Then you have impress, where you talk about color schemes, typography, uh, animated visuals, effects for transitions or something, if they are required. And we'll also discuss why they are required in particular cases and why they are actually not required in most of the cases. Uh, appeal is something uh, slightly abstract term, but um, it is uh, more to do with your perception of whatever is being presented. For example, the first slide which I put up, most of the people started giggling and looking around. Is he gone crazy? Like, why this slide and uh, all that? So that's actually the appeal which was generated because of that sort of a slide, which was not appealing at all. And uh, I have put practice as the bottom line of everything. Because however good you do all this stuff which is written on the top, if you don't practice your presentation, then it is, it is kind of guaranteed to bomb. Because um, you just can't uh, be um, maybe uh, uh, spontaneous enough to uh, execute all the detailing what you have been trying to put into your presentation. So uh, I remember Professor Fatak narrating me his um, uh, his uh, experiences when he started teaching. So the first thing he bought was a small recorder, audio recorder, those times where the cassette player. And every time he had a lecture in the next day, 
is to put a cassette in that and really uh, completely read out or talk about that lecture in a loud voice in front of a mirror and record it and hear it a couple of times before he actually gave the presentation. Now that's what practice is. And if you don't do that, um, you are bound to get beaten up in the lecture actually. Um, so we are going to focus on this today. And uh, I will I'll share with you some of the techniques what can be used for planning. Uh, let me uh, put a disclaimer that these are not the only techniques but this is, these are the, some of the techniques which we are going to practice today and see how we can plan our presentations well. Right? <coughs> so one of the techniques what I am going to talk about is called brainstorming. So how many people have actually participated in such things? Like there are group discussions I know about, but uh, have you actually uh, done a formal brainstorming session with uh, about a topic sometime? Okay, so it was a team meeting yeah. kind of thing where you wanted views of everybody to be consolidated. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how it is. And uh, we we have to analyze what comes out because brainstorming like this actually it's not lot of uh, data. They are may not be related directly to what you want to do. So we have to put them into proper buckets in order to make it usable. So that will be the analyze stage. Finally, organize them in common so that that will be usable for our presentation. Plan. For that, I uh, I use mind map. And uh, since I thought uh, this is a, a, a session for the department of CSE, I thought I should mention it moreover because there are so many interesting tools available to actually uh, create a mind map online and uh, share it with people. It's a very exciting tool, so we'll go into uh, the depth of that today. But uh, let us first start with what we need to do. So uh, we, I am told that the groups are already formed. Every row becomes a group. So uh, if you are a group, uh, give a name to your group was the initial idea, but no need to spend time on that. You can just simply write the row number for the people present today not for your uh, absence uh, uh, members who, who will just uh, take the advantage of <laughs> being in your group. Okay, so people who are present today will get a sheet each which will have one topic written on that. Uh, the topic will be, it's a very generic topic, nothing political about it and uh, nothing official about it. It's just a topic. It's just for our assignment purpose that we are taking this topic. What you have to do is uh, follow the brainstorming activity um, after you get the paper. So the, you got the white paper with, with a name on it, uh, with a title on it, right? you are getting it. We are distributing a couple of rough sheets like this, the two page answer sheets on each row. These are for rough work for you to write up. The actual submission will be on the right page on which the topic is written. That is the topic of your discussion. The first thing that the group will do is when the page is distributed one page per row, that is your topic, you will write on the reverse side of that page the roll numbers of the people who are present in that group. Those who are present on the group, the group may be three people, six people, five people. Okay. So everybody got one. Uh, this is how you have to start off. Just start with, so discuss amongst your team members on the, uh, in the group and just start with whatever comes to your mind. It can be words, concepts, ideas about that topic. Keep writing them on your, on the rough papers right now. Yeah, the rough papers have to be just a couple of uh, The order is saying first write, first write down on those rough papers. Okay. And the final mind map that you arrive at should be drawn on that file sheet. But before that, please ensure that you write the roll numbers of all the people in your group on the reverse of that white paper. That is the paper that is in your Only those roll numbers which are present, please. mind and keep writing on the rough paper right now. We are not, uh, we are not writing on the white paper 
which has the topic name, right? Just go ahead and write. I'll I'll come towards each group and try to ask you whatever you had thought of. Those people are drawing my map. Those some of you who have some prior idea of my map, but when you do that, they are actually working alone. The objective of this phase is brainstorming. You are not supposed to do anything alone, anything. Even if you have an idea and you want to write it down, you must share it with your neighbor. At least tell the neighbor what that idea is and then write it down. The whole idea of brainstorming is making each other aware of one's idea. And it's a vital aspect. Since we, most of us work alone, we don't recognize how important it is. So you for example, the last row, I can clearly see that the normal people cannot even see each other, forget they can hear it. So you should use this thick pair chair. Talk to your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor about your idea, let your neighbor talk to you. Then jot down some points and then collapse and talk to each other. You should talk to each other and yeah. keep going. What's your topic? Software piracy. Ah. Okay, I, I saw that a uh, couple of groups uh, within uh, the, this uh, row have uh, been discussing. Just pass on the papers from one end of the row to the other end of the row and ask them to cut and add or edit whatever you have written. Basically, try to ask questions about every sentence written there. And why you have written this? What is the motivation behind writing this? That type of thing. And if you agree, keep it. Otherwise, just start deleting it. This was um, this was actually um, I added this based on the last lectures by Professor Patak, in which he said that uh, for your topic, uh, go ahead and discuss with your team members over dinner or whatever, whatever, which I am sure not many people did that or if they have done that, that's wonderful. But this is just a glimpse of how things can emerge out of it, right? So once you, once you have the populated paper with you about the idea of whatever we generated from, in order to categorize them and analyze them, we need a structure. And the reason I am saying is that the structure has to be based on the requirement of the audience, whom are you going to talk about this thing, right? So if you know that life at IITB as a top, who has that topic, life at IITB? Which group had this topic? Okay, one, two, okay. So uh, if your target audience was a college in uh, VJTI, I suppose, you have to go and give a talk at VJTI, uh, what will be the orientation of this? Why service, uh, if you have to give this uh, to the freshies of IIT Bombay? You will, you will change the presentation, right? Because of the uh, audience being changed. Uh, will you change or it will be the same? It will be the same or change, okay. Uh, so the structure is important and it, it depends a lot on who is going to read it or listen to you or look at it. So suppose I tell you that these are the alphabets to be remembered by the end of this lecture. It's very difficult for you, obviously. Uh, probably some smart people may may use a structure of saying, okay, there were five A's and three I's in that, and that's how we can remember. But even this is difficult. Some more smarter people will create some sentence out of it and spell it out later on. But even these sentences are very difficult. But if my audience is going to be uh, the computer science student, I'll probably rearrange them in this, which will be very interesting for you to remember all the time. And though you no need to have that arbitrary words are on the top or the alphabets on the top. So if my my uh, audience is this, I would rather structure it in a format that they will understand the whole thing. Similarly, a mountain comic or an account mini ohm or iconic mom nut is very difficult to remember as opposed to communication. So that's easier to remember. So the structure is something which has to be considered when you start collecting these ideas and trying to present it. So the first thing you have to think of is audience. So whom are we going to talk about? So for your presentation, it is your group itself. So the rest of the people are your audience. So remember that while you are structuring your things. So 
So now let us just get on to how will you express these uh, brainstorming discussions what you had into a format which is uh, interesting enough for people to understand the presentation even without standing here and presenting. So one of that uh, method is called mind map and uh, <coughs> you can actually uh, make it using various ways and people have, uh, there are enormous uh, uh, documents available about what is a mind map and how you can do it. I'm not going to spend time on that because most of you uh, can just go out and read it. But why I'm saying is that now when you have uh, this particular idea, okay, let me just, uh, okay, so whatever ideas are generated today for that particular topic, keeping in view that the audience is going to be your own class, start structuring it in a format of a mind map. And uh, the way you have to do it is um, start with the central idea, whatever is given to you in the center of the paper and just have various hub and spokes to that. So it's a main hub is that life at IITB or software piracy or whatever the topic is and just start talking about various aspects. You can use this uh, rough outline of what was the problem statement, if, if there is a problem statement. Like for example, I, I asked uh, somebody who had land ban uh, advantages and disadvantages. They said we don't have any advantages of land ban anyway, but uh, <laughs> since you've, uh, you have asked for it, we'll try to figure out if there are any advantages. So you can just go ahead and uh, you know, just create a mind map using this. Uh, just to show example that this is a classic slide of uh, guidelines how to create a mind map. Explained in detail text what is it. But a uh, lot of people have shown me uh, and it's already registered that these guidelines presented in this format are much more legible than reading out those 12 points. So a mind map of mind map guidelines is much more readable than the guidelines itself which are written in text. So you can easily see that it starts from the center of what is the topic of this mind map. It's about mind map guidelines. And there are certain uh, first, uh, first level pointers like what is uh, clarity, what is, how do you start from center, what are the styles to be used, what are the keywords, how can you use the lines. So lines can be labeled by saying that observed by or something like So you can label the lines. You can use colors to denote different sections of the mind maps and other things. So the task for you is like this. These are some of the mind mapping tools. Uh, the first two are free tools which can be downloaded easily. Uh, Think Busan is, is one of the most popular tools on the web. However, it is not free. Uh, it is limited uh, usage is free, but the rest of the thing is paid. But the top two tools are, uh, are free and you can use them. I have been using them. So the assignment is as follows. So brainstorm about the topic within the group and uh, you can continue whatever you have been doing. But then when you have that, you just create a mind map. You use any one of the free tools which I have already mentioned and we will post this uh, slide on uh, the Moodle so that you can get the URL. But uh, just for people, it was XMind and FreeMind are the two uh, tools. You can just write down that name. And then uh, every mind map software will give you an option to export that as a JPEG. So this I'm underlining, send me a JPEG or upload a JPEG because last year when we conducted the similar assignment, most of the people gave me that um, original mind map file, which was uh, very difficult. I had to install all the softwares on my machine in order to open them. So that's very cumbersome and time consuming. So just export it as a JPEG and uh, send it across, right? The activity will be uh, actually ending on the 2nd of April because I believe you have bigger deadline prior to that. So uh, you will not be able to spend time on this. That's why it is deliberately kept at 2nd April. Announcement is that on 1st of April, the class is not going to happen here. The class is going to be uh, for the entire IIT students in the convocation hall. Therefore, we are not meeting on 1st of April. We'll meet on 3rd of April. So uh, on 3rd of April, we'll be able to see mind maps of every group. That's the, uh, one of the uh, agenda items for the next thing. So we'll have discussion on mind maps. And then from mind maps, we'll see how execution of presentation will happen. So how from a mind map or from the brain brainstorming what you have done, what are the pointers which can create a presentation? What, what should you extract from that mind map in order to make a presentation? So that will be the topic for the next session.
So I would like to stop here and give you some time for questions if you have any. Important questions. The first question is, I do not know whether each one of you has the email ID and contact detail, hotel number, room number of a colleague group member. Somebody has written their roll numbers uh, on that sheet, on that white sheet. But uh, nobody knows which are the groups. Even we do not know which are the groups. So what we'll do is we'll collect those white pages back. Scan it. And, and not scan it. And we'll put the title and the roll numbers on the Moodle to that group list. We'll do that by today, anyway. Because I don't think you would have drawn any mind map on that page now. Uh, but you are expected to draw a mind map on a page and submit it, <coughs> which you will do using that tool later. But continue this discussion and use some time now, the last two minutes before you leave, to decide on a common place for the group of three, four, five, six people to meet and spend another 10, 15 minutes together. This is a group activity. Preparing the mind map is a group activity. And therefore, the group has to have a coordinator. So my request is that take that white paper where you would have written the roll numbers on the return and put a star against one roll number who will be the coordinator. Only that star person shall submit the JPEG file. So that there is no confusion. Here is a question. How to represent abstract research topics such as Right. Right. What is your seminar Abstraction of quantities and time from a new text. Extraction of quantities and time information from a free flowing text. So that you don't know what is written. And you have to identify whether there is any information pertaining to time. Okay. Which could be yesterday morning, 5 o'clock, or which could be in 1973, whatever. And the other one is quantity. So he sold uh, 100 kilograms of rice or whatever. whatever. Large statue of uh, uh, what you call AK 47 were found, etc. <laughs> so all kinds of things. Uh, he claims that this is a very abstract topic. I claim that this is a very real life topic. He believes that if the ideas are very mathematical, because you are obviously going to do some, you are, you are going to surf the web, right, to get all the information. You'll have a large number of documents, and you'll have to decide on keywords for those documents, you'll have to rank those pages, you do variety of things. And you are not very sure how to present those ideas or how to write a mind map for that. Okay, so one suggestion is that the words that you use and the words that I use themselves could be the initial keyword that you want. But it's very important for you to think more as if you are discussing with someone else. Ideally, you should pair up with some friend of yours. Help that friend to think about his or her topic and get help on your journey. Thinking and brainstorming are very essential activities in planning. And we have the opportunity as human beings to always discuss with people, but invariably what happens is, in a preparation towards any assignment, we are used to the dicta that you shall not discuss with anybody else. You are expected to do everything on your own. It is a very stupid rule. Because any assessment also must form part of learning. So this is an opportunity where you actually should discuss. Get out of that mindset, discuss with people. Exactly. Actually, the point what you were talking to us, during that discussion itself, we generated a lot of keywords around this talk. Correct. If they were noted down, then immediately we can think of chunking them into various boxes. What are the problems? Any other questions? Yeah. So, there is something called functions that I can use some tools for that. So, what is the difference between mind map and function map? Something called? Function map. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, so concept map and mind map. What is the difference between the two? Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody have answer to this? Or I will also put my five cents into that. Uh, have you heard of this word concept map? Or mind map was more heard word for you. Or you have heard nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Within concept map and mind map, there is not much of a difference. You can uh, define as such. And then at the definition level, there might be uh, a fundamental difference into both. Uh, the concept map actually starts with, uh, it's a very formal methodology for creating uh, whatever flow you wanted to present. On the other side, mind map is slightly having a free flow and you are free to uh, drag and uh, you can add many things and you can have interconnections between the things. In concepts, typically you can't have uh, uh, two uh, third hierarchy bullets joined to each other or things like that. So, so that's where you have to have a co concept being explained uh, exactly like in a textbook where you have uh, a flow of uh, things a very formal way. So that's how uh, people typically associate concept map and mind map. But yeah, they are mostly uh, similar to each other. If you see two uh, examples of uh, both of them, will probably not be able to figure out what is the concept and which one is the mind map. That's how it is. Anything else? So I'll see you on uh, third.